Three, two, one, here we go. Hello everyone, I'm Brian the Rain Man Lucas. Welcome to Rain Man's Take, observations on the world we live in. We're going to take a deeper dive into topics of interest to me, including politics, current events, history, popular culture, and social issues. You'll find the diversity of topics refreshing. In our clickbait, soundbite society, we rarely get the whole story. Rain Man's Take interviews interesting people as well as peeling back the onion on specific topics, all with the goal of getting people to think more deeply about a subject. My guests today are Janelle Kim and Craig Nandu, owners of JBK Wellness Labs. JBK is a contract manufacturer specializing in nutraceuticals and topical cosmetic products centered around their unique proprietary herbal formulas. Greg, Janelle, hello, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank Brian. you so much for having us, Brian. So yeah, happy to be here. My pleasure. My pleasure. This is, uh, uh, this is something that I think is, is very uh, poignant, especially in today's day and age, uh, not only with the rise in popularity of all the CBD products that we've been hearing about over the last you know, eight to 10 years, but also just in, in, in our current events with, with everything that's going on with COVID-19 and uh, all the news about the push to find, a, to find a vaccine, to find a cure in a lab, it's actually going to be nice to talk to, uh, talk to you guys about the more uh, homeopathic and holistic ways of taking care of yourself. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and why don't you guys tell me a little bit about JBK Wellness Labs, uh, how you got started, and what you're doing today. Absolutely. Well, I will say this. So as you introduced me so beautifully, thank you with Craig, of course. Um, my name is Dr. Janelle Kim, and I hold my doctorate in acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Uh, but the most important thing we have to share, particularly through JBK Wellness Labs, is that I come from a long lineage of herbologists and doctors who I always like to take a moment to acknowledge dedicated their entire lives to understanding the human condition mentally and physically as well as the incredible healing powers of herbal ingredients. Uh, and this is over centuries, right? And so these formulas have been passed down from generation to generation through my lineage. And I'm, I'm basically the very first woman to be uh, the custodian or the guardian of these formulas. And in this uh, moment in time, actually about, let's say about almost 20 years ago now, we decided for the first time in history to let these formulas out to the world, to the public in a way that they've never been before. And so that's how JBK, how we created JBK. Uh, ultimately, so that we can do just that. Yeah, and early in the um, in the early 2000s, we actually had some brands that we took to market, Whole Foods, uh, and then we had some high-end brands in uh, Whole uh, Ritz Carlton, Four Seasons, Mandarin Oriental, for example. Uh, and we pivoted around 2012 to strictly contract manufacturing. And so we had uh, we had a lot of companies coming to us and saying, "We love what you're doing with these herbal formulas." How can we get them into our brand, uh, our branded products? Uh, and so we were, you know, a little bit resistant at first because, uh, you know, people coming out of the woodwork asking for herbal formulas. Uh, but then we started to see some really high quality brands uh, that, you know, had some great distribution. Uh, you know, Janelle, for her, uh, part of her, her greatest wish is to be able to get these formulas out to as many people as possible. Right. And so for us at that time, uh, it was a great way to be able to start to do that. So since 2012, we've been strictly custom manufacturing uh, for different brands. Nice, nice. Now, I definitely want to get into the, uh, the history of it as well, Janelle, and, and, and how far it goes back in, in Korea. But just real quick, what you just mentioned when you guys first started, uh, how did these, these other brands, these other companies, how did they find you? What, and what was it that attracted them to you that made you kind of realize, hey, this might be a, a way to tack our, our company going in the direction of doing uh, contract formulas. How did they, how did they find you? What was that all about? You know, it's a funny thing because something I, I like to recognize is, can you imagine that there was a time not long ago, about 10 so, or so many years ago, when um, the natural product industry was not a thing that we understood in such the way that we do today. You know, it's crazy to think about that. At one point, natural products were not the thing because that's right. all we all, for the most part, look for today. And so about, like I said, about 15, 20 years ago is when this really began. And at that time we were helping to build certain brands 
And so that's really how we started to establish ourselves in the industry. We started in the spa industry, as Craig said, started building brands. We had um, the incredible opportunities to start to look at different retail markets. So we really started to make our, our pave our way in, in, in being in the forefront of the natural products industry and certainly the herbal products industry uh, when it comes to personal care and cosmetics. And so over time, people just under, started to understand who we are, our understanding of proper formulation, which I'm sure we'll get into in a second, um, which is key here, understanding, again, skin, how it truly works, and, and creating the most luxurious, all-natural, herbal, and effective products. And then people really just came looking, and we really have not had to advertise or market at this point. It's pretty much been through word of mouth. Um, and you, yeah, we believe that goes a long way. Yeah, and you know, it's a, it's a funny thing, too, because you know, the nutraceutical industry is so big internationally, but when you've been here long enough, you realize it's a small world, you know, and there's yes. so many people that you come across, you know, five years later, sometimes 10 years later, and you reconnect and, you know, they tell somebody about, about you and, you know, what you're doing. And I think as long as you're doing things, you know, really above board and uh, the right way, uh, it'll come back to you at some point. And, you know, we've seen, especially if we talk about CBD, you know, a lot of fly-by-night companies that have jumped in uh, to, to get in and get out. Um, and uh, I, I could, we could have a whole podcast about just some of those stories, but um, you know, we, we started out and you know, our, our goal has always been to put out high quality products that are really going to have an impact on people's lives. And, uh, and so we've been around for a long time and, you know, we just get people that reach out to us and, and, and that's really how we've, we've grown. Mm -hmm. Really. We haven't done any out, outside external advertising uh not that we won't and uh, you know this this kind of platform didn't even exist you know 10 years ago and so there's all these things that we're doing that you know people will watch this and you know somebody will say oh you know i'd like to touch touch base with them and see what they can do for me right. so uh, different ways like that but mostly just word of mouth nice and we'll, yeah. we'll definitely get into it a little bit later i, I want to just talk about your your facility where it is and, and if that's kind of where uh, where you do all your, um, all your all your lab work. But let me say this real quick, just in basically what you were just talking about in how it's now just starting to come around where people are starting to realize that, hey, you know, alternative, at least us in America call it alternative medicine. You know, we're, we're just start, it's just starting to come around. And I was telling uh, Craig earlier in, in uh, the pre-show, uh, right now UCSD just started up their alternative medicine department which is a lot of uh, holistic herbal uh, remedies as well as like acupuncture and those sorts of things so it's definitely it's definitely catching on here in southern california but california being the west coast probably uh was was enlightened to it for a long time i told craig a, a story this has been back when i was in college 30 years ago um you know i had no idea about any of this stuff right <laughs> And my, uh, one, of my, one of my friends that I played lacrosse with, his mom would send him a care package of, uh, of herbal supplements in the, you know, in the drop bottles, the little drop of bottles. And we used to make fun of him all the time. None of us ever, none of us knew anything. And we actually called his mom the witch doctor. I'm embarrassed to say that now, but now from what I, what I know and based on what I know of you guys and, and how long we've known each other, uh, it is fascinating. And what you're about to tell me is this has been around for a long, long time. So, so uh, you know, why don't you tell me a little bit about, uh, if you could, just about your, your family's background in Korea and kind of how this all, all came about to you being the, uh, the latest in the line of, of the gatekeepers. Absolutely. So to summarize, because again, that could be its whole own podcast <laughs> as well, but to summarize, ultimately I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine. So clearly the Chinese medicine is the ancient medical system that goes back, you know, thousands of years. That combined with Ayurvedic, of course, there's so many other ancient medical systems as we know them today. But Chinese medicine certainly holds a very strong power and effectiveness over so, so many centuries. It's a pretty uh, common understanding, I would go so far as to say, that herbal medicine, and understand something, in the West it's a little bit different. When you travel to East Asia, in my experience and, and my understanding, um, acupuncture and herbology are kind of two separate divisions, if you will, right? And so certainly I'm trained and licensed in acupuncture, but in my life, I have kind of dedicated myself to herbal medicine. And this is something that you will often see in East Asia. You'll have an acupuncturist department and the herbal medicine doctors, right? Um, and so, so here we have Chinese medicine. Over time, obviously, it started to spread and went into Korea. And Korea, 
as has become very well known as really advancing herbal medicine. And that stems back uh, into a great Dr. Hojin, which is, which is one of the renowned herbologists and doctors, I would say, uh, who my lineage is connected to. And so that's, that's a good person or, or date to kind of hold on to there, a, a good person, you know, because everyone else says, how far back? How far back does this go? The truth is my lineage has a, a lot of depth to it. So the truth is we don't really know, <laughs> but for sure I can say I'm about nine generations. Wow. From when, right, yes, exactly. So, so you can imagine, and I think that's something that's very important and something I speak of often around the world is that there's something to say about why this medicine, why the formulas that we use, for example, have existed for so long. And what I love to say is they work. <laughs> They're effective, just like you said. I totally get it. Something, even when you were back in college and, and your friend had these, had these vials and we all made fun of them. And I totally, you know, that's a common understanding because it's something that's unknown. But, but the truth of the matter is these are things that have been used for so very long. Um, and so, right. And just so you know, that's how, uh, that's how we drink our supplements is in these, these amber glass bottles. And, you know, we just take <laughs> swigs of them. Uh, we have all different types of formats that we do, but those are the, that's what, that's what we're getting at home. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, uh, um, you, you mentioned in one of the, one of the videos I was watching, uh, earlier, you'd mentioned the, uh, the encyclopedia, the medical encyclopedia, the, the Dogi right. Bogum. Um, exactly. and then that, that's actually a ancient medical encyclopedia that's used today in, in medical schools. Is that what I understood? Absolutely. Definitely in Eastern medicine. And that is actually the book that Hojin, Dr. Hojin, put together, basically okay. compiled all of his research and his life's work. And so the Dongi Bokum is definitely in Korean medicine, one of, one of if not the most important medical text um, in understanding the human body, uh, mind, you know, as far as that component and right. herbal medicine, acupuncture. And uh, in this day and age, you don't hear about it so often yet, but I'm, I know for a fact that it's starting to be looked at and understood, as you brought up about you, UCSD, right? Starting this alternative medical right. program, uh, which is amazing, of course. So this text is certainly being studied in many very prominent medical schools here, even in the United States, so. Yeah. And now uh, let's, let's, let's jump right in then. Uh, the JB Wellness, uh, JBK Wellness, excuse me. So you guys are located in San Diego and you do everything here in San Diego or is it outsourced to Korea? How does that work? We have, so uh, we do all of our sourcing, um, you know, in the U.S. Uh, obviously we source ingredients from different parts of the world. Um, as Janelle might mention, uh, where those ingredients are, are best grown, for example, and when we're talking about herbs. Uh, but we have our facility in San Diego. That's kind of our headquarters. It's where we like to be. It's down the street from, uh, so to speak, from our house. Uh, and that's where we run all of our topical products. And so we have a uh, fully functioning, you know, automated uh, facility here in San Diego. And then uh, we uh, also have a manufacturing up in Orange County, uh, California. Uh, and that is where we run all of our dietary supplements and over-the-counter uh, pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. uh, we have licenses with the FDA, fully CGMP uh, compliant. Uh, and we also, uh, in the last few years, uh, began manufacturing in Portugal as well uh, to service wow. the, the EU market. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, uh, we've, we've been able to you know, have uh, this triangle of, of places that work uh, interconnect interconnectedly with each other. Right. And, uh, and, and Craig, we were talking about this a little bit earlier as well. Maybe you guys can kind of touch on it. But let's say you, know, you, let's say you go to like a Sprouts here in San Diego, and they've got a big herbal supplement uh, area in, in the store. And inevitably, almost all of them have the, the uh, you know, this has not been FDA tested or FDA approved. Have you guys, have you, guys uh, you know, obviously – well, why don't you tell me, how, how does that whole process work in terms of getting your product out there that has got the track record going back centuries? Uh, how do you get it out there and still kind of have to deal with that whole uh, statement that they, that, they, that they put on a lot of the herbal supplements that you see out on the market? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely, uh, you'll see on most supplements that uh, there's a, an FDA disclaimer that these statements haven't been evaluated uh, to that by the FDA to diagnose, treat, uh, cure, et cetera. Um, you know, in the dietary supplement world, which is where a lot of our herbal remedies exist, um, that's 
you know, where we have to watch claims, right? And so what we have, in, uh, without getting into too much, you know, boring detail, um, you know, the FDA describes it as structure function claims. And so you wouldn't say that this capsule, for example, uh, will alleviate your pain, uh, but you would say it supports uh, healthy muscles and joints or bones, for example, depending on what you've got. And those can be based on studies that exist. Um, and going that route makes it much more accessible to the general public uh, versus pharmaceuticals where you may have to go to your doctor, for example, and then you've got, uh, you know, the list of side effects that you hear about in commercials that, uh, that don't sound very good. So that's how. I mean, every, it's crazy. Every, every medication that you hear about in um, TV commercials, <laughs> the side effects are worse than what you're trying to, you know, it's crazy. So, and, and that's, that, that's why this is, this is such a fascinating uh, interview. So, uh, so let's, let's, let's talk now. Okay. Contract manufacturing. So one of your clients comes to you and says, talk me through that process. They say, Hey, we, we want a face cream. We want a, a, a pain cream. And then, what, what does that process look like from there? And then how do you, what do you guys do in terms of uh, being able to sort or service that, that client? Absolutely. You know, we've come to find that we're not your typical contract manufacturer, if I may, <laughs> for lack of a better way of saying it. I think because of our history in the markets and the industries prior to us even starting contract manufacturing, it gave us a lot of insight. Um, yeah. And so that's certainly been helpful. And I say that because technically someone can come to us uh, with a concept, you know, they can say, we just want a beautiful, and this certainly happens quite fr frequently. They might have one or two ingredients that are very interesting to them that they'd like to use in formulation, but they'll come to us and say, oh gosh, Dr. Kim, the JBK team, Craig, we would like to create a beautiful skincare line. You know, these ingredients are important to us. How do we do it? <laughs> you know, and then we go down that road. Truly, you can just come with a concept. And so we do everything from that concept, creating the formulations, Honestly, uh, most of the time, that's where I say we're a little different than a lot of contract manufacturing companies out there who just make product, put them in bottles, and put it out there. Our clients, whether people know we're behind them or not, because our name is not always on the forefront of the product or right. the company, uh, we take it very seriously. Everyone we work with, for the most part, really cares about formulation. They care about people, and they're pretty much part of our mission and journey in sharing these formulas with the world. And so we really help to mold even the way collections will look, certain regimens, um, what might be, you know, some key factors to, to put into your line. And so it goes that deep with us. And so we really make partners. And so from that point, we go into R&D, we start to produce, we manufacture, and it's everything from the finished product in packaging, possibly secondary packaging, as you say, Craig, into the pallets, and we ship it off to wherever, yeah. you know, in larger quantities, of course. Yeah, and I'll say, you know, it's, it's a little different, uh, you know, how we operate, as Jim was saying. You know, we, we're very collaborative, um, and so we're a lot more selective about who we work with, because if we're going to be that in-depth on a project, we want it to be something that we enjoy and we support, mm -hmm. um, a team that, you know, is doing things the right way. We really like working that way, uh, whereas, you know, you have your standard kind of factories where you say, oh, here's a formula, just w run it for us. And, you know, they're competing against every other factory and saying, oh, how many pennies can you shave here and there? Uh, you know, we're really a, a, a high quality uh, production team. Uh, we bring that value as well as just, you know, the what does it cost to put the product in the in the bottle. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we work. And, you know, it's, it's, it's our home for us, you know, our, right. our lab is our home. And so, you know, when we invite people into our home, we want to treat them really well. Yeah. Nice. And uh, so um, you've got your high end clients do the, 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 the rep or the owner of this particular brand, when they come to talk to you, how much, how much background information do they have about, what it is that you do, Janelle, or are they just completely sort of, hey, just help me out. This is what I want to do. You take care of it. Or is there a level of, uh, I guess, baseline education into what they're trying to accomplish? You know, it varies. Um, for the most part, I would go so far as to say that pretty much everyone steps, who steps into our lab has an idea of, you know, my background, uh, what, we what we have to give for them. Um, and who we are, our credibility, the trust, they have trust in us, basically. Um, having said that, sometimes it can be um, a wonderful entrepreneur, and sometimes it's a team of doctors who, have, who come with tons of research behind a certain ingredient or ingredients to create 
you know, a dietary supplement line or a nutraceutical line. So it varies so much, Brian, but, but I can definitely say that pretty much people come into our lab, maybe not knowing every detail, but having some understanding that we're a little different than the rest. Yeah. Right. And that means something to them. You know, yeah. us, being, us being unique makes them unique. And we take that seriously. And yeah. obviously it, it lends credence to, to what you're doing if you get a bunch of doctors coming to talk to you about a dietary supplement. And yes. It, and so just using that example, and, and obviously I know there's a certain level of confidentiality here, but in terms of what you could tell me, so the doctor comes to, the, the group comes to you and says, hey, we've got this, we've been researching this one herb or this one item. What can, can you help us? what, marry that up with some other things that you know of that exactly would put right. together the formula? Is that how that works? That's exactly right. And I tell you, that's one of my most, I mean, every day is exciting for me. Uh, and I know Craig feels this way too. We're so very fortunate. It's a lot of hard work <laughs> beyond. I don't think people understand manufacturing in, in that way, but it truly is so exciting, particularly when there is um, truly that understanding of, as you mentioned in the, in the beginning of this interview, uh, this time together is that some doctors will come and we have such an integration of east and west and all different modalities which which as far as i'm concerned at this moment in time is real and this time forward is the only way it's going to be i mean we can look around and see that right now the integration the clinics of both east and west and our hospitals particularly here in southern california we're so lucky but really throughout the nation and certainly throughout the world um, but yes that definitely happens right in our r d you know lab uh, combined with so many people that we work right. with. And what, what's the, uh, from start to finish, how long does it typically take you to put together a product for somebody? You know, it just depends how much, uh, how much customization goes into it. And so I would say, you know, like if we're talking about capsules, generally uh, those can move a little bit quickly because, you know, a lot of what takes the longest is uh, flavor profile or texture when it comes to a topical product, mm -hmm. scent, uh, right. those things that you may have, uh, you start with a, uh, uh, benchmark. Yeah, benchmark. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're like, look, I want it to feel like this, but, you know, use what you can to make it really good. And so, you know, that process generally takes, I would say, four weeks, uh, you know, on a sample development uh, stage. It could, it could last longer, depending on what they're looking for, mm -hmm. uh, depending if they're going into uh, stability testing, that could be three months, and then you get into production, uh, it takes another eight weeks or so. So it really depends. We have some people that really have a a keen eye on what they're looking for. So they come and they're like, this is our packaging. This is what we're going to be doing. We just need some formulas to put in there. Uh, and then it goes a little bit faster. But sometimes, you know, if we're sourcing, you know, 50,000 units of a custom type pack package, you know, there's the back and forth uh, between the, the factories in Asia or wherever that, or in Europe, wherever that's being made. And so that, that adds time. So it can take anywhere from, let's say, six weeks all the way up to six months sometimes. So. Yeah, this is the truth. This is the truth. And I should say for anyone who this might, you know, uh, be meaning or be meaningful to, or is that some people will also sometimes show up with a pre-existing line and maybe they feel like, you know, you know, JBK wellness team and Dr. Kim, will you please look at this line and see how we can make it that much more unique or make this formula feel or smell this much better. Or it could simply be, you know what, I don't get that feeling from, from the current lab we're working with, you know, that I feel here. And that's really important to me. I feel like you care. So it's a funny thing. You know, there's, there's such a variety. So nice. yeah. we, are, uh, we are talking with Craig Nandu and Janelle Kim, owners of JBK Wellness Labs. You can find them at www.jbwellnesslabs.com and Dr. Kim's uh, personal website, JanelleKim.com. We were talking about uh, sort of the, 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 the rise in, in popularity and effectiveness of, uh, of uh, herbal, herbal medicines and herbal supplements. So thanks very much for joining me, guys. Let's, uh, let's take a quick jump back to maybe eight, 10 years and kind of talk to me, because it, it kind of seems like the whole CBD movement is kind of almost, uh, you guys are almost perfect for it to be, to be kind of right in that beginning stages of all of that. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like working with the, the early stages of the CBD industry? Sure. In that industry, we often say it's light years, right? So I don't yeah, know, 2012, actually, 2012 was actually that year when it kind of all began. And this yeah. is before people even understood what CBD was in this, well, period. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, for us as an herbal 
products manufacturer, you know, for myself as an herbal medicine doctor, I am very aware of this herbal ingredient. And I actually speak around the world at this point and have been since 2012. I should, should go back here in a second, but have spoken about the fact that this is an herbal ingredient that has been known for 4,000 years. And so it's yeah. an amazing thing that's coming to fruition at this yeah. moment in time. But even knowing that, I have to say how we got started um, is that I received a phone call from the lab, Craig was there, <laughs> because someone had walked into our lab, as we've shared, kind of looking for our expertise in formulating with this ingredient. And, and this particular client, partner, is, was one of the very first, if not the first, in, uh, in the CBD industry. They kind of started the CBD right. industry. And so when I got this phone call asking if I would work with this ingredient, my first uh, my first response was no, <laughs> and that's the truth, you know? And I hung up the phone and kept on doing my thing. Right. Um, and that is because I didn't understand what their purpose was behind this. Clearly there was a stigma, which I have hopefully been a big part of breaking understanding, uh, you know, there's a whole other side to this powerful ingredient. Right. But it, then I got a second call and they said, again, please, Dr. Kim, if you could just look at this, you know, we're not exactly what you think we are. And it was correct. I started seeing that they really cared, that they were really helping children, that they were really helping people in need. And I thought to myself, okay, we've been at the forefront of the natural products industry. We are certainly at the forefront of the herbal product industry, the herbal medicine in this country, you know, helping people to understand what that is. So I thought, all right, fine. I'll dedicate myself to um, taking on this ingredient and helping to spread the proper understanding of what it is around the world. And that's how we began. So we were one of the first manufacturers. In fact, it is known that we created the very first CBD luxury skincare line in the world. So, so that's where that comes it. from. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny that you say that because, I mean, now it kind of doesn't really matter in California because marijuana right. is legal. But even, even up before it was that, it, it was always connected, with, and, and again, this is coming from a guy who knows nothing about this. We <laughs> always had that connection. CBD, it's, it's taken from the pot plant. It's, you know, right. and then it was, it was they, they were like running parallel, and then all of a sudden they sort of separated right. just recently with, with all this. But is, is, that, is, that the, is that the mindset that you've been trying to, to unravel in people? You know, hey, this is not... Yeah. Yes, Brian. I mean, for me, yes. Unravel that is a, is a perfect way of saying it. For myself, the moment that, for myself and my lab, uh, the moment that we kind of set our minds that, okay, we will be a part of this movement to, and, and, and speak on this ingredient, this powerful ingredient in a powerful way, um, right, we kind of stood in this lane and have not been moved from it. And anytime I go to speak, my most important thing is explaining it just like that. It is one of the very powerful herbal ingredients. There are others. <laughs> this is the truth. But it is certainly a very powerful one. And I have to say, I'm grateful for what this ingredient has done. You know, there's a lot of things out there that I don't agree with. I'll say that straight. I don't like a lot of the, the stigmas that are out there and why they have become stigmas or paradigms. Um, I'm not for that. And that is why I have put myself kind of as part of this to have a proper understanding. But, but I will say that I'm grateful because I have seen this ingredient open up more doors in some way, shape, or form to understanding that there is this whole other side of preventative medicine, if you will, uh, of understanding holistic medicine integration. It certainly has catapulted a lot of that, that part of integrative medicine. Um, so I'm really I'm grateful for the industry for, for that, that aspect. It's a funny thing, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with CBD back in 2012 and just, you know, <laughs> nobody knew what CBD was, right? Yeah. So if you started talking about CBD and they say, what's CBD? And you're like, well, it's from hemp. Everybody right away would just go straight to <laughs> marijuana and yeah. getting high. Yeah. And so we would go, you know, to, to our son's you know, school or preschool at that time. And uh, we didn't tell anybody what we were doing. Well, in fact, and at Vince's at our first son, uh, what was it like the orientation for preschool yeah. two-year-old so it's not right. even preschool it's pre-preschool i didn't i never knew i'd send him that early but um <laughs> and i'm sitting there with craig and i get a google alert with my name and i just happen to show craig and it's like janelle kim and the cannabis expert and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> you know and i think brian we've known each other certainly you know of me that yeah. i'm obviously i come from a very open-minded integrative family but i also grow very academic very strict i mean right. this is not you know this wasn't a common thing <laughs> And, and, and the thing is now, you know, uh, all the all the people at, at school, you know, our kids' school, they're taking tinctures, they're taking right. capsules, <laughs> CBD capsules, 
and uh, there's some outlandish stuff like CBD pillows, you know, which make no <laughs> sense. But you know, it's just uh, it, you know, everybody everybody knows what CBD is now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy to see that you know that total you know shift. different yeah total in shift. such a short amount of time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my uh, my wife and I were in uh, Southeast Asia last fall. We had an unbelievable trip to. Vietnam, Laos, and, and Cambodia. Awesome. And yeah, it was incredible. And just kind of, you go to those places and, uh, you know, you go into some of these outdoor, outdoor markets and you see all the, all the right. herbs. It's just, it's fascinating to look at that. And uh, uh, so I want to just take it back just a little bit more. Um, Janelle, tell me a little bit about uh, JBK. That was your, that's the initials of your great grandfather. Yes, that's and, right. Thanks, Brian. Uh, and then from there to you, what was passed down? Was it, uh, was it a book? Was it, you're going to go to this school and learn this way, and that's how we're going to pass it down? Talk to me a little bit about JBK to Jeanette. Yes, absolutely. So, so I definitely, I went to school. So pre, when I was in college, I thought I would go into pre-med, right, to study Western medicine. And after a bit of time, I started to, you know, occurred to me, which, which I've seen my entire life, my family kind of having these formulas that certain doctors would come to us, whether it be a skin condition, a digestive condition, you name it. And we would, we would basically give these formulas to certain doctors or, or people in that sense to share with their patients or to take. And so on one hand, I was, I am used to seeing this as I grew up, but it was such a part of my life, which is right. exactly what I speak of now. That is the most important thing that we can do, how it be part of our lifestyle in a sense that you don't even think about it that way, right? Yeah. But for myself, I was studying pre-med and then it occurred to me at some point, of course, uh, in between uh, finishing that, that I realized, you know, I really need to do something. It just kind of occurred to me one day, just like that. I need to do something to show the world how powerful this is because even it shocks me, you know, uh, simple things like having incredible pain with wisdom teeth, you know, something that doesn't usually happen. And no matter what medication, pain medication I took, it wouldn't help anything. It was my own experience actually. And, um, and some uh, hand acupuncture and some oral medicine took the pain away immediately, right. you know, and, and then it started at that age as in my adult, young adult, almost, well, yes, young adult, around 18, 19, did I start to really see this, you know, really pay attention to what these formulas were doing for people. And, and then I realized, you know what, it might not make sense to anyone because I was so stringent on the road I was going, but someone has to do this. So having said that, that is where we started going down this road. I went to school. I studied both here and in East Asia. I decided to definitely get to go to the most well-known accredited school here in the United States, um, at that time, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it still is, is Pacific College of Oriental Medicine. Um, and now I think it's Pacific College of Health Science. They, they just recently changed their name to kind of open up that much more. Um, so I went to school there, and um, I also studied in East Asia, in China, Beijing, Jinan, of course, in South Korea. And so quite a few different herbologists and doctors I had the the incredible opportunity to study with, including Alex Tiberi, Bob Demoni, Warren Shear, um, Dr. Li Jie, and a whole bunch of other herbologists in China. And so uh, my schooling is very much a very big part of my life. Then of course, when it comes to my lineage, you're exactly right. JBK is named after my great grandpa, Jinbo Kim, or Kim Jinbo in, in Korea. And he was a very well-known uh, herbal doctor, practitioner. And he was known to have many clinics and actually did a really amazing thing. So he was so very popular and renowned, but he would have two big, like in Korea, if you ever watch the, the movies of old history, you'll see these huge, almost like vases, right? Um, they were kimchi jars. <laughs> I don't always tell the story, but I love it. You can create a visual. And outside of his door, he'd have two of these huge vases. And so people who could have money to donate, they would donate into the vase. And in fact, people who did not have any money you know, really didn't have very much of anything. They were, they were actually encouraged to go and take some money as they left. And so what a beautiful story, even outside of the clinical yeah. aspect of it. But my great grandpa right. basically devoted his life to treating patients. And certainly it was him who started to pass down those formulations that I, I know to this day. Um, and those formulas were passed down from my great grandpa to my father, to myself. And they're all, you know, oral. They're all up here. <laughs> and so that's a very important thing, you know. Um, that's why we call it the oral tradition. And so that's where it goes back many centuries and generations. 
Nice. Now, uh, Greg, has she, she told you any of those, or she's, she's keeping you Absolutely not. Sure she's <laughs> no, I, I don't get to know any. you to find out? No. Well. <laughs> um, That's so, the, uh, the, I mean, this, uh, and you mentioned earlier about you could do a whole, do, whole podcast segment about the history of it, and I may take you up on that if you guys, uh, somewhere yeah. down the road, because <laughs> that really fascinates me. But what in in 2020? How are things? How are things going? Is it picking up? Has the has the whole kind of shut down? Has that impacted you at all? Or are you you guys still kind of trucking right along with with the clients that you have? Where where we stand right now with JBK? You know, it's interesting. I think that uh, we're in a fortunate position to a certain extent that uh, you know we're uh, you know continuing to manufacture through the process. Um, you know, we've had uh, some high demand. Uh, We've kind of pivoted and been able to produce some hand sanitizer mm -hmm. uh, for the time being, some of, some of which has gone to uh, first responders, um, you know, through some different uh, uh, state governmental organizations. Uh, there's been high demand for that. Uh, what we've seen, you know, it's interesting, you know, COVID-19 has shuttered a lot of places for the moment. Mm -hmm. So Nordstrom's and uh, you know, other department stores, for example, and spas uh, that some of our clients sell into. And so we certainly are, are working with them uh, through this process because mm -hmm. we, we certainly feel their pain. Um, and so we, we've seen some, some slowdown on that side uh, just because that's the way it is. But uh, for us, fortunately, we have some unique things and we've been able to uh, make that sanitizer, especially some very specific ones with uh, some of Janelle's herbal formulas. Uh, and essential oils that enhance the uh, the uh, effectiveness of those of those formulas, and so we continue to just move forward, uh, just like everybody else. Yeah, interesting. And uh, um, Craig, what where's the, what's your LinkedIn page where you have that video? Just kind of throw it out there in case anybody's interested in learning more about. You know, that. it's probably just my name. I, I'm so bad at this stuff, Ryan. Uh, but <laughs> I believe it's just spot, Craig Charlie. Nandu. Uh, yes, you know, it's Craig LinkedIn, Nandu on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Page. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. so, yeah. yeah. So we're talking with uh, Craig Nandu and Janelle Kim from JBK Wellness Labs. Don't go, don't go to Craig Nandu. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, brother. <laughs> I was going to say, don't go to CraigNandu.com because you'll get a, a 404, 404 error or something. <laughs> <laughs> go, to see the video about the hand sanitizer, LinkedIn, Craig Nandu. Yes. But all the fun stuff is at JanelleKim.com. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, this and that's what I thought was so cool when I when I ran across that video about you you guys doing the hand sanitizer. I actually had a uh, a very good friend of mine who has a distillery downtown, and um, I haven't talked to him in a while. But this was kind of right when all this was starting, and he was he was uh, talking with people and whoever whoever the the governmental agency or or whatever it was to to pivot and start making hand sanitizer. So I, I I'm not sure how that worked, how that ended up. But you, uh, when I saw your video, it, it totally reminded me of that. So you guys are doing yeah. a very- A lot of the stories have, have shifted that way. Right. Yeah. Which is wonderful. So, um, yeah, so I think that that's, uh, that's really cool that you guys um, are doing that, especially in, in the current environment. Um, Janelle, you mentioned earlier in, in the interview, you are talking about uh, when you travel and you speak to groups about uh, about what you do kind of talk a little bit about, about that what is your what you, kind of what is your what's your talk about how is it received kind of talk a little bit about that if you could absolutely so at this point in time and for the last couple of years I focus mostly on medicine I say that because those of you who may know me or those of you who are getting to know me um, I often say that there are three pillars that I love to speak on um, and they're all connected, and that is medicine, movement, and philosophy. Um, I am currently moving more into the philosophy end as it all connects. Um, in fact, I'm working on a book right now and starting to teach on something I call living meditation. But in the last few years, I focus mostly on medicine, on herbal medicine. And so you're right, I have traveled around the world speaking on various topics, but they all are centered or rooted in the understanding of as many might know it, preventative medicine, but to me, it's just knowing yourself, you know, particularly in moments that we find ourselves in right now, where it can feel very overwhelming on every level. I mean, 
I understand. And that's exactly why I feel the need to work harder than ever to be able to share whatever I possibly can, because I am a mom of three young, I have two young boys. <laughs> it feels like three. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't even mean that. That's very funny. I, I truly did not even mean that. <laughs> At least it's okay, Janelle. Janelle. I, I know them, so I know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's yeah. very funny. Huh? You couldn't even plan that. Um, I have two young boys, you know, a three-year-old, a seven-year-old, homeschooling right now. I'm a wife. I'm a daughter. I own businesses, <laughs> you know, um, trying to balance all of that. And that's not even to go into trying to process what is happening in our world at this moment. Right. Um, and so my favorite thing to talk about and to, um, you know, remind myself and others is that the most important thing we can do is empower ourselves. And the way we can do that, whether it's physically, our physical health, our mental health, emotional well-being, is by truly getting to know and understand and being aware of ourselves. Right. Knowing how we feel. I mean, it's as simple as that. Just taking a moment to feel how we're feeling, right? To take a moment to acknowledge. And it literally can be a moment. <laughs> and that's what I get. You know, I don't have a lot of time all the time to think about all these things. So I form a lifestyle by educating myself, by becoming aware of products, ingredients, proper formulation, which is what our lab is all about. When you take dietary supplements, when you take uh, skincare and you apply it topically every day and every night, remember skin is your largest organ. You know, our body and our mind is already going, are already going through so much right now. So many challenges. We're built to be able to handle this. But my whole thing is why make life harder than it has to be, especially during moments that are very challenging and stressful. And so I have spoken in the last couple of years that understanding how herbal medicine can play a huge part and become part of your lifestyle, how you incorporate it as part of, of your daily regimen in very simple ways. But you make your immune system stronger. You make your condition stronger. So when things occur that might knock that balance off, you can do the very best possible, your very best possible, to prevent getting sick, to prevent you know, having you know, emotional imbalances, to prevent having so much stress that it starts to affect our condition. And that is the very most that we can possibly do. And so I have spoken about this for a couple of years and will continue to do so for as long as I'm here on this earth, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but yes. Nice, nice. Yes. Um, a couple of things. I want to ask yes. you about that book a little bit more, but- um, yes. Yeah, it seems like, especially in this whole COVID-19 environment that we're in right now, um, it, 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 it seems like what you're hearing is people that uh, otherwise had not taken care of themselves, i.e. have underlying conditions. Right. Um, you know, I guess maybe the takeaway is while you're still young, while you're still healthy, work to keep yourself that way. And, and, and is that, would you say that that's kind of, what the this this herbal medical philosophy is all about is is preventative or is there actually things that you could do like if you are like set aside right. COVID nineteen for a second but right. let's say you come More. down to the flu is there you know are there things that 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 are out there or are there things that you could put together for a company to make and actually make an herbal product that could help the body kind of recover from something like that. Or is it more? Oh, certainly. I'll say this. Eastern medicine is a very powerful preventative medicine, lifestyle medicine, right. but you better believe that there are strong formulations, whether they're topical, ingestible, that you can help to rebalance certain conditions that might come your way. You know, right. the truth of the matter is, and I'm really happy that you said this, there are some of us who do, they can even take the very best care of our body, but no matter what, we can't avoid what is around us. We have to be able to balance with that. And right. so, so yes, there are a lot. We, we know of one actually that you see very often when it comes to, um, you know, some of the symptoms of a cold. There's something called yin chow san, which is now in whole foods and sprouts. You might not even know it. Maybe a lot of people don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a uh, patent medicine. And, 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 right. What did you say, Ryan? I said, forgive me, I don't, so I apologize. Yes, I right, no, and, but, but now that I say it, you might see it on the shelf, it's out there. And it's because people find that it can be effective when you have those symptoms, you know what I mean? Homeopathic medicine, I like very much uh, incorporating that sometimes when my kids are really young. You know, sometimes herbal medicine um, certainly can be very powerful in helping to boost their immune system, and, um, helping with certain symptoms of the common cold. And so you just really make yourself educated and aware. But yes, to answer your question, um, particularly what comes to mind is when it comes to certain muscle and joint imbalances, right? If you have different discomfort or, you know, you have some old injuries or something is a little weakened, that is an incredible time uh, where some very powerful herbal formulas we actually, that's probably some of our most popular products that we create are ones for muscle and joint health. 
and that can be effective, you know, pretty quickly, people can feel better. Right. Yes. Interesting. Um, and how far into the book are you? Is it coming out anytime soon? Can... Should be coming out soon, yes. I'm just now I'll finishing that. At the very end, have to do a <laughs> podcast about that. Yeah, so thanks, Brian. Um, so let's, uh, I'll tell you what, we're, we're kind of running up against a, a, a time limit here. Yes. Uh, we could go on and on on different subjects, yeah. so I would love to have you guys back on to do this again. But let's, let's talk uh, kind of right now um, in terms of, uh, uh, have, you had, well, have you had any issues with um, you know, pivoting to, let's just use the hand sanitizer. I mean, do you have to go through the same crazy loop hoops that you have to for, the, for, the, for your more formalized uh, and, and more focused formulas? Or were you able to, the fire department needs it, the hospital needs it, let's go ahead and just make it and, and we're good. I mean, was, was it that smooth or was there hiccups along, along the way? Or talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, you know, it was pretty smooth. I mean, uh, we always have a bunch of hoops to jump through because, you know, we have <laughs> quality <laughs> management yeah. systems in place, yes. uh, you know, that uh, have evolved over time. And, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm technically the president, but uh, if, if, if something gets to a checkpoint and it doesn't check out, then somebody's looking at me and saying, hey, you know, it's not checking out. We got to bounce it back. And so we've, we've always got uh, hoops to jump through. But with those hoops that we have internally, um, it, it mitigates the risk of something not going right down the line. And so uh, if, we, if we tried to pivot without those things, yeah, maybe we'd have some, some challenges. I think but, a lot uh, of manufacturers might be doing yeah, it out there. Yeah. And we certainly take it very seriously to follow CGMP guidelines and right. whatever's important. But right, hand sanitizer, it's been pretty smooth on our end. You know, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's some ingredients and packaging in, in the world of personal care uh, yeah, that's, products, that's, that's a different. whole other yeah. story, <laughs> you know, the supply chain, but, but no, it's been pretty smooth. Yeah, the packaging covered is bare. Yes. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys at liberty to say uh, the current, current line of products that are out there that, that are your formulas? Are you, are you at liberty to say that or? We can't, I mean, uh, we, you know, it's funny, we have, uh, we have NDAs in place in all different places. And so we just have a standard policy that we don't really talk about that. Uh, there are some, you know, if you look up Janelle, you might be able to find some uh, companies that, uh, mm -hmm. that are there, but the, the answer is no, but they are carried in uh, Nordstrom and, uh, Neiman Marcus, and Marcus. Dorf, Birdman, okay. in your, like we already named Four Seasons, Ritz Carlton, Mandarin, in your Whole Foods, in your CVS, CBS, in your Walgreens. Yeah. So we're, we're out there. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Are there, uh, without, without putting you on the spot, are there any plans to uh, have a proprietary label at some point down the road or you got, or you got your hands full right I'll now? tell you what, Brian, <laughs> people ask this on a daily basis and, and you know, so certainly <laughs> that, that is, uh, is there and I understand that, you know, um, I really do. And so, so certainly that's not, not a, uh, not off. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Yes. Thank you. That's what I was saying. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's what you were saying to me earlier. It's the it's the uh, the moving with the towel of the of the. That's business, right. Right. It's the um, only way. I love to go it. with the flow. What? What's that? To go with the flow, but be rooted in going with the flow. You know, Ryan. <laughs> We've had these conversations before. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, guys. Great to see you again. Thank you very much for your time. I would definitely like to uh, continue this conversation down the road, especially when the book comes out. Janelle, um, again, Craig Nandu, Janelle Kim. It's www.jbkwellnesslabs.com or JanelleKim.com. Check them out if, uh, if you're interested and want to learn more about what we were talking about today. Just a really interesting and um, timely, uh, timely conversation about uh, the benefits of, of herbal medicine. So guys, thank you very much. And what I'd like to say just as, the, uh, as we finish off the podcast here, uh, if you're in the military, the police, fire, or first responders, if that's you out there, thank you very much for everything that you do, especially in today's day and age. Please keep safe out there. And uh, Craig and Janelle, thanks again for your time. Thank, thank you, you so Brian. much for having us, Brian. It was this wonderful. Yeah. All right, guys, this is The Rain Man signing off. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching Rain Man's Take, observations on the world we live in. 
If you like the content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. You can also follow Rain Man's Take on Instagram at Rain Man's Take. Also, check out our website at www.rainmanstakepodcast.com and send your comments to rainmanstake at gmail.com. Keep an eye out for future podcasts, which will be coming out every Thursday at 5 p.m. West Coast time.